three, two, one. You do have to wait like seven minutes. Bought this at least a year and a half ago. 220 with the light on. I'm ready to give you my thought in terms of these LED light bar. Hello. Today it's a really, really exciting day because I'm gonna trim the mango tree once and for all. I've done it once before because I'm trying to avoid it, keep going straight up, but it's not working. See, it sprouted again. So I uh, reach out to some of these bonsai experts and cannabis or weed experts, and they say like, okay, to trim it properly, you gotta pick the right note, cut right above the note. So today we're gonna cut it right here. And the tool of trade, because I want one clean cut, I need a big scissor. So we're gonna cut it, I think right here. Ready to lop it off? In three, cut an angle. Three, two, one. Two, one. Fail. <laughs> there it is. And um, from the reading that I've done, like you only want to do these kind of like aggressive vertical tr trimming if the plant is old enough, mature enough to take the take the hits. This is a lot. Uh, some people say that I could potentially root these guys using like some rooting powder and whatnot, mm -hmm. but I don't think I'll bother because the, the root is not the, the bottom portion is not going to look right. Um, I feel like I much prefer to grow mangrove from pots, which I have a couple going here. So unfortunately, um, maybe I just put this in a bucket. I don't know, but I don't know what to do with this yet. For now, that's how it's going to look. And Wait, what? <laughs> don't worry about it. And the wish is that it's going to sprout two branches here and be a little bit bushier up here. And also because from from what I these what I read, so do your own research. From what I read, if the vertical branch is too big, right, it's blocking the light to all these sub branches. That's why the kind of skin kind of by cutting this off. Number one, you bring the light to the lower branches, and number two, it it encourages a hormone to go to the sub branches versus keep going upwards. So at least that's a hope. We'll see in a couple months what happens. Thank you. My heart is pounding. <laughs> yeah, I guess Kowloon is going to pull up a chair and just also wait and see what happens in a couple months. <laughs> Alright, time to get to work. The next morning. Every month or so, I like to do a round of manual testing, especially on the nutrients to make sure everything's on the up and up. Typically, my Alcatronic as well as the Mastertronic takes care of all the auto testing. Alcatronic has been spot on problem free. For the Mastertronic, I'm waiting for some replacement parts to do the maintenance. So right now, even though they're kind of reliable towards itself, it's kind of wonky compared to ICP tests as well as auto testing. And that's why in the meantime, it's so important for me to do like manual testing, maybe like every month or so to make sure everything's on the up and up and at least the ICP test as well as the manual test matches up. So today I'm doing a round of nutrient testing to make sure nothing is bottoming out. And because I talk so much, the Hannah's phosphate checker already timed out. But it came in at 0 0.03. Uh, and as you can see, the value I'm shooting for is 0 0.03 to 0 0.05. So it's a little bit on the lower end. Nitrate has came down dramatically since the last time I checked. Uh, right now it's 20.6, it was 30, maybe like three weeks ago. So the refugium is definitely doing an excellent job pulling out nitrate as well as phosphate. Uh, I need to now look into how to keep them there because 20 uh, is actually really close to where I want nitrate to end up. Uh, 15 is probably my ideal. By the way, I am a big fan of the HANA nitrate high range checker. Uh, be careful, there's like a low range and a high range. Low range is a little bit more cumbersome, a lot more steps, and uh, anything over five you need to run a dilution process, which is extra steps. The high range one is a newly released one. You put in one pack of reagent and you're good to go. Uh, the only downside is that you do have to wait like seven minutes, but with uh, I think most nitrate tests on the market, you do have to wait anyway. So it's not something new, specifically to the HANA checker. But yeah, I really like the high range one. All right, with a clear idea of where the nutrient sits in this tank right now, I would like to bump up the phosphate a little bit and kind of keep the nitrate where it is. So what I would probably do is number one, I'll kind of prune back the refugium a little bit, which is gonna take away the power it can to like take down the phosphate as well. But at the same time, I'm gonna start feeding a little bit more reef roy. Because every day for coral food, I usually do like benefits and uh, once in a while I do reef roy. And for a reason I have been using benefits a little bit more than reef roids is because uh, the word on the street is that reef roy does kind of bring the phosphate up a little bit in the tank. But in my particular case, because I want to Raise the phosphate in my tank. Reef roids are gonna fit my bill. This week, I think I'm gonna feed a little bit heavier uh, in terms of like reef nutrition product as well, especially the oyster eggs, uh, because I wanna bump up some of my nutrient level. So, as you can see, many roads lead to Rome. Or many ways to skin a cat, whichever saying you prefer, many different ways. Two days later. So, one other thing that I'm getting to is actually this guy right here. This Ali E bar, I bought this at least a year and a half ago because I understand that with my Radeon XR15. 
it's not gonna be enough to cover the entire depth or the width of the tank, which is 30 inches, right? Uh, probably should have got the XR30, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad I got a 15 because now I can uh, just kind of boost more light uh, intensity in the back side of the tank and leaving the uh, the front side, which is the coral that does not really appreciate a lot, of, a lot of light. My plan is to find some way to attach a light uh, to the back, or at least uh, just hang it from the ceiling for now until I find some way to attach it. So this will be kind of like a dry run, a test run. The only downside with these uh, really affordable LED bar, which it cost me like, I think 65 or $69, is that they're not controllable, meaning that I cannot uh, dim it. I cannot dial it down, which is a big, big minus in my book right now because I want to, I do need to acclimate these corals to this light bar. I think uh, these bars supposedly throw about like 100 par and stuff like that. I cannot just blast a coral with it. For now, I just want to get this up there, measure the par value and slowly acclimate the corals to this because this, again, this guy has been sitting for like a year and a half. I feel like it's just depreciating value as it's sitting in the storage. I don't know. Let's put it to use. We'll see how it goes. I just want to make sure I'm not shocking the coral. That's all. Here are my ghetto rake. Uh, this came with the light the brackets. I used a portion of it. And this actually came from my string lights uh, that I hung at the Porsche. Uh, I got some leftover uh, rubber coated wire strings and uh, perfect. So I used these little guys, like uh, these wire clamp versus I was looking at my old install. Look at this. I just tied knots, y'all. Alright. <laughs> It just seems a lot more appropriate. And I got some extra extra wire here, so I can probably just cut these off because I have so much more. Uh, but I figure I'll just leave it in here because uh, at first I want to hang the, light, hang the light a little bit high and slowly lower it closer to the coral so they can acclimate. Uh, because as you know, I cannot dim this guy. Okay, the way it's mounted right now, if you can even call it that, it's uh, super wonky. Just a little bit is peeking out. Um, I just want to get a really rough estimate before I do anything more drastic, one sec. What I mean is to get a really quick par reading of uh, that outcropping where I put SPS. So right now with that off at the Fruity Pebble is getting about 115 par. All right, let's turn this light on. Alexa, turn on air pump. I did not change all this name yet. All right, so it just came on. Visually, honestly, it's not much of a change. Oh, I take that back. But par wise, it jump up to 170. So uh, it's definitely doing something. Cause like, again, visually it doesn't really, it didn't really change too much. How about at the rock work? Top of the rock work right now, even with like most of the light bar cover is sitting at 245. Alexa, turn off air pump. Wow. Uh, with that off is 190, 195. Alexa, turn on air pump. 200. From 200 to 250, it boosted about 50 par. This is another use case for having a par meter uh, either on hand or just rent or borrow one when you're setting up light because that little bit, I didn't, I didn't realize that's 50 par right there. Par value looks fantastic and uh, I like what I'm seeing. So let's go ahead, drill the ceiling. That's probably a better way to figure out where exactly to drill, but I pretty much just kind of eyeball it. I'm relying on my expertise in playing the claw machine. As an Asian, I have my pride in terms of playing the claw machine. I think I'm decent, not the best, but I'm decent. So with that geometry knowledge, I put a couple X, couple X's <laughs> to mark the spots. As luck would have it, one of the uh, whole actually hits a wood beam. Good thing the target bolts I'm using has that uh, wood screw option as well. So I'll try this and hopefully that's a wood beam is not some kind of vents, then I'm screwed. All right guys, here it is. It looks kind of wonky, uh, especially since it's so high up. But again, I want to slowly acclimate it. But first, let's try. Alexa, turn on air pump. Yo, wow, okay. Oh, look at that. You do get a little light now on the on the backside for sure. Now that I'm looking from the front here, let's do it one more time. Alexa, turn off air pump. Alexa, turn on air pump. Boom, look at that. That is cool and that is the ultimate goal of this tank. Light up the top portion, the back top portion of this tank for SPS. You know what would be cool? Maybe you can do some kind of like cloud or frosted uh, background here. So uh, I haven't really talked about this guy much. Luffy's, uh, this uh, Thousand Sunny can look like it's actually flying in the sky. That'll look awesome. Part of the 
rock that's on the back glass is about 150. Now it's getting about 185 to 190. So it's a jump of maybe like 30 par. I think we should be okay. Forest Fire Digitata is getting 220-ish right now. So without that light, it's getting about 200. So it's about 30 par. And the center of the Zoa Garden is 190. 190 to 200 without that light 220 with the light on which is a little bit high for my taste I'll probably dial back the uh, Radeon just a little bit because there's definitely some light bleeding into other portion of the tank and I want to make sure the uh, the Ramp up is gentle especially for the other parts. I think right now I'm at about 62% intensity for the uh, Radeons over here I dial them back to like 56% or something and we'll see what the power value was at. I'm trying to get I'm trying to keep this portion to be about one, 180. I think 180 is good. Three days later. Oh, guys, look at this. This is how the tank looks like right now with that LED bar overhead. Real quick, it looks kind of odd with it floating all the way up top, but um, like I mentioned before in this video, I want to slowly acclimate the corals to the higher par value. And this is a moment where I'm really glad that I actually have a par meter on hand because I did not realize how much par that little LEE bar is uh, throwing out. I have the bar raised all the way up. I dialed the Radeon from like 62% all the way down to like 56% intensity. And I'm still getting a 20 par increase on the top of the rock work. On the rock itself, right now, right here is hitting about 200 par, and right there is hitting about 220 par. So the increase of the par value is pretty significant, and uh, it's just gonna increase even more as I slowly drop the bar a little bit lower and lower. Now, with the bar in place and with the Radeon dial back uh, up here, we step back from 200 par to about 180 par. And uh, down here, I think we're sitting at about 130 par-ish. So at some point, I do need to move to that clamp because I don't think 130 par value it's uh, enough for a maximum clamp. Overall, I'm really happy with the uh, LEE bar. Not only the fact that it costed me about $75, but also the fact that it uh, definitely brings up the par value to the back of the tank for the SPS. And over time, as I start dropping the light bar lower and lower, the value is only going to go up. And if I want to boost it even more, I can turn up the Radeon because right now I doubt the Radeon back not wanting to uh, kind of like bleach out any of the corals up here. And later on, when I'm ready to boost the uh, par value up even higher, I can of course drop the light bar lower and lower so that the light is more concentrated to the back portion of the tank and more intense, as well as dialing back the uh, Radeon G5 Pro back up a little bit. Uh, but there's only a little bit of range I can play with because I really don't want to like uh, light shock all these corals right here. So if it's not obvious, I am very, very happy with the $75 AliExpress light bar. And huge thanks to my Reef Sensei Telegram of uh, bringing in this budget choice. Uh, even though it's not controllable, but the spectrum is good, power is good, and the value is great. If you're interested in learning more about this light bar, head on over to uh, my Reef Sensei Telegram's YouTube channel. He spent a couple episode uh, live streams actually talking about this bar, where to order it, and how he would recommend configuring it because the one I got is not the standard configuration. Uh, but for more information, head on over to his YouTube channel to learn more about this. Because of the configuration that I use, it does also give the corals a little bit more pop as well. And so if you look at the SPS, especially in the back, you see that color seems a little bit more vibrant same with the uh, corals up the head and the color is still really natural looking but then it just looks a little bit more crisp and a little bit more saturated and I really really like this look one thing I do want to mention is that I've been really careful in terms of uh, dialing in the power value because of how deceiving uh, this light bar was uh, if I did not have a power meter I'm sure I would have like light shark some of these corals already because it's, uh, at its original height which is just a little bit lower and I turned it on I was like okay visually it does not look that different so I didn't think too much about it until I stick a par meter underneath it then oh my goodness like the par value there was a jump of about like maybe 50 to 70 at certain spots and it was still pretty high up so I was really surprised because visually it did not look that different uh, so that's uh, one big plus towards uh, me having a par meter on hand it really helped me and uh, also help the corals to make sure they do not get light sharked a lot of boring math later all right guys it's Saturday morning I have the light over the tank for a little bit. 
I'm eating egg tarts in the morning, I'm drinking coffee. I'm ready to give you my thought in terms of these LED light bar versus a more premium light, and in my case, the Radiant. I used to do quite a bit of like gadget and tech reviews on YouTube, so I'm gonna step back in time into that mode and give you my consumer's opinion on these two products. So first thing to address is that both of these types of light have more than enough power to grow coral, so that is a wash. So for the LED light bar, of course, is the price, and uh, I just simply cannot get over how affordable it is for it to put out these kind of power value. You can absolutely grow corals. The second pro of the LED light bar is an interesting one. You cannot mess with the spectrum. And a lot of people are saying that we are stressing out our corals because we keep playing with the light, different intensity, different spectrum. We should just set it and forget it. And with the light bar, yeah, you cannot do anything. It's there. Now on the flip side of the coin, we get to the more premium or expensive lights. I'm just going to use expensive. I know it's kind of like a bad word, but let's just call it what it is. With the more expensive light, for example, the Radions I got going over the tank, I have full control of the spectrum. I understand that I just said that not able to control spectrum is a pro, but uh, let me get back to you. Second pro for the more expensive light in my mind is the ability to control it remotely on your phone natively. I understand that you can add like a, a voice controlled uh, power plug or timer to a light bar to make it more interactive. But for the more expensive light, these are all built in and a lot of them are more tuned to just the light itself versus trying to hack something together. And finally, for me personally, the third pros for the more expensive light is the different mode that you can set. For example, you can set like acclimation mode where ramp up intensity over the span of like 30 days for radions. And you can also do stuff like photo mode where if you know that uh, you're gonna film or whatever, you can just uh, press a button or say something and then it just turn into more white light and you don't really need the uh, yellow clip if you don't want to. So these are the pros that screamed out at me as a user of the products and as a consumer consumer in terms of two different price points of uh, the light bar and one of these more expensive lights. All right, so here's the fun part. With all these information I have after using these products, um, if I were a consumer with different like, I guess, budgets, how would I pick? If I were a consumer on a tight budget or if I'm really budget conscious where I want to save the money for corals or other things, I am absolutely going for the light bars, whether it's like two light bars, three light bars, whatever. I know whatever I got stacked up in terms of like par values, if I compare the price of like what I get with the light bar uh, to more expensive light, like the Radions here, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm using that as an example because that's what I have. Uh, light bar is going to win. So without a doubt, if I'm budget conscious, tight on budgets, light bar, Yes. On the other end of the sliding scale, if I'm lucky enough to be able to spend any amount of money I want on a reef tank, then there's absolutely no reason I would not personally go for uh, a full coverage of one of these like more expensive lights, for example, the Radions or the GHL lights or the um, uh, Neptune Sky. I believe almost all of these more premium lights or more expensive light could do anything that the budget light could do. Granted, there are stuff like, okay, it could be missing a certain spectrum or the uh, ratio is not perfect. But for the most part, they can all grow corals. And of course you get all the nice UI, UX and all the other things that I previously mentioned and more. In my particular case, if I were to do it all over again, I would probably do two Radeon XL30 in the middle and then also a um, LED light bar in the back and potentially in front as well if I really want to go for SPS. It is very similar to the setup that I have right now and I'll explain why. I used to run T5s over my old tanks and one of the biggest problem I have is trying to get a sense of how the tank would look with a certain bulb combos. And I'm sure if you ran T5 in the past, you have been online looking at photos of like different light bulb combos of like, okay, I got uh, blue plus, I got a tinic blue, I got purple plus, like put them together. What does the tank actually look like? I mean, seeing the spectrum of the different light bulb is great, but I just simply cannot mentally put them all together and get a sense of like how that would look, how that would translate over my tank. In the past, I've done the best with like reference photos of T5s and like how those tank looks. Even with those reference photos, I find that each time after I get the bulb up in my tank, I have to learn to love that look uh, for a period of time and I do not miss that. So bringing it back to the now, I would prefer my main light that drives how my tank visually look to be tunable. So I can find a good balance between power performance and visual appeal. I understand that we can request bar with a certain wavelength, but I'm not confident I could translate that to how it looks visually in my mind. Of course, I understand the health of the corals is our number one priority, but once that is achieved, I would prefer my tank to visually look good as well. And this is not just for the initial tank setup as well. Uh, later on, maybe I'll finally find the Tops Blue Zoas 
or the purple people eater zoas that look a little bit nicer under white light and i decided that you know what i want my tank to be a little bit white i have that ability to tune versus being locked in in a certain spectrum i think i sleep a little better knowing that i have the ability to tune versus worry about okay what happens if i want to change how the tank looks uh next week you know even though i know i should not but having that ability it's kind of nice. And kind of in the nutshell, having the ability to turn up and down the intensity to acclimate corals is also nice as well. Gone were the days when I'm trying to raise the whole like rag or like put sheets of plastic on top of the tank to acclimate. So this is kind of like my thought process going in uh, with a more affordable light bar versus a more expensive um, leaf lighting. But remember, this is just the opinion of one person and this person bought a car that will go way faster than he'll ever drive it. <laughs> Maybe I like the reassurance of the little excess power and reserve to get me out of pinch one of these days. Or maybe just vanity. Or maybe it's a little bit of both. I don't know. Take it however you want to. I personally believe that both lights have their own markets and they do have some overlap or maybe a lot of overlaps. Just like over my slightly inappropriate tank. Here is one of the uh, Vermina snails. I'm really tempted to just crack it open to see what it actually looks like.